Yes, guys. Let's turn to problem number 25. The following information is extracted from the books of X Limited Group. There are three companies X, Y, and Z. Equity share capital 8 lakhs, 6 lakhs, and 4 lakhs. What we have should be more concerned about is the PNL. Check the PNL 2 lakh 10, 1 lakh 90, and 1 lakh 28,000. Right after the PNL in the balance sheet, it says dividend from Y Limited. Received in 2010, 60,000. Received in 2011, 60,000. And from Z, Y received 36,000 in 2011. These things are dividend received. Dividend received also should be transferred to PNL. He did not transfer it to PNL. He is showing it as a separate line item on the liability side. Let's not discuss about whether it is correct treatment or not. But let's say that he is just showing it on the liability side there. On the asset side, I will see that X holds X and Y holds investments of 6 lakh 30 and 4 lakhs. All the company pay a dividend at the rate of 12% of paid up share capital in March following the accounting year. So December is the ending of the accounting year. He is paying the <coughs> dividend in the month of March at the rate of 12%. The receiving company will account for the dividend in their books only when the dividend is received, which is a regular treatment. X Limited acquired 50,000 equity shares in Y Limited on 31st December 2009. Y Limited acquired 30,000 shares in Z on 31st December 2010. This is not multiple dates of acquisition because one date is for X in Y, another date is for Y in Z. So there is no multiple date. And in, when I talk about multiple date, it should be two dates on the same subsidiary. So here we have two dates in different subsidiaries. So there is no multiple dates of acquisition. The details of PNL is given to you. Balance of PNL as on 31st December after dividend at the rate of 12% in respect of the calendar year 2009 but excluding the dividend received is 86,000, 78,000 and 60,000. Net profit earned in 2010 less dividend of 12% paid in 2011. What you pay in 2011 is 2010 dividend. Net profit of 2011 before taking into account a proposed dividend at the rate of 12% in respect of the calendar year. So for the current year, they did not propose any dividend. One, indi one more indicator is that on the liability side, I don't have a proposed dividend as a liability. That itself is an indicator that the proposed dividend has not been made. So we have to propose a dividend now. Taking this into consideration for transaction from 2009 to 2011, ignoring taxation, you are required to prepare consolidated balance sheet, cost of control and minority interest. Obviously, when you have to prepare the balance sheet, cost of control and minority interest are anyways an integral part of it. So, let's start. Simple problem guys. If you observe, there is nothing much as far as the problem is concerned except for the dividend adjustments. But dividend adjustment, they have completely given pre-acquisition, post-acquisition. Every possible dividend is given here. So, let's start. Let's start with the date of acquisition as usual. X and Y, 31st December 2009, Y and Z, 31st December 2010. Coming to the shareholding pattern. Number of shares held and percentage holding. In Y, X and minority hold. Number of shares held by X in Y, 50,000. Number of shares in Y, 6 lakh share capital, each share of 10 rupees, so 60,000 shares. Number of shares is 60,000. X holds 50,000. So minority hold 10,000. 5 by 6, 1 by 6, 
हंड्रेड परसेंट इन जेड वाई एंड माइनॉरिटी होल्ड हाउ मेनी शेयर दस वाई होल्ड थर्टी थाउजेंड नंबर ऑफ शेयर इन जेन फोर लैख शेयर कैपिटल ऑफ टेन रुपीज इच फोर्टी थाउजेंड फोर्टी थाउजेंड शेयर थर्टी थाउजेंड आर हेल्ड बाय वाई बैलेंस टेन थाउजेंड आर हेल्ड बाय माइनॉरिटी शेयर होल्डिंग पैटर्न इज सेवेंटी फाइव ट्वेंटी फाइव देन लेट्स गो फॉर द एनालिसिस ऑफ रिजर्व एनालिसिस ऑफ रिजर्व ऑफ सब्सिडरीज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू डेट ऑफ एक्विजिशन my first analysis of reserves i should always start with the indirect subsidiary indirect subsidiary is that limited under that limited the reserve to be analyzed is the pnl that's the only reserve existing in the balance sheet balance as on 31st december 2011 balance sheet date balance check balance sheet PNL balance is one lakh twenty-eight thousand. What is the date of acquisition in Z? In Z, Y in Z, thirty-first December two thousand ten. Balance as on thirty-first December two thousand ten. Check. 31st December 2010. In Z Limited, that P&L column, the P&L separate, <coughs> the schedule is given for you. Z Limited, 2009 they had 60,000 profit. They have earned 56,000 in 2010, and out of which 48,000 is paid as dividend. At the end of 2010, after payment of the dividend, the amount is 68,000. At the end of 2010, after payment of the dividend, it is 68. Obviously, my current year profits are 60,000. Current year profit is 60,000. But there's an adjustment. Adjustment towards the end, saying that this was this net profit is before taking into account the proposed dividend at the rate of 12%. 12% proposed dividend in Z. Z paid up capital is four lakhs. Twelve percent is forty-eight thousand. Balance left out is twelve thousand. I can take this sixty-eight thousand as pre-acquisition, this twelve thousand as post-acquisition. There is only one reserve, guys. We have already given the adjustments, so you can split. The limited holding is Y and minority. Seventy-five, twenty-five. So that has given our distribution of Z. <coughs> for why we need to go for a distribution table? Because we need to add Y share of post-acquisition reserves in Z. So let's start analyzing for Y limited. 
this is crucial guys same only one reserve p and l start with balance as on 31st december 2011 balance as on the balance sheet date in y limited is 1 lakh 90000 Split the profits. What is the date of acquisition of X and Y? 31st December 09. 31st December 09. What is the amount of profit? The P&L as on 31st December 2009. After a dividend of 12%. That means after deducting dividend is 78,000. Balance as on 31st December 2009. Seventy-eight thousand. Two years profits exist now. A profit of two thousand ten, and then profit of two thousand eleven. Ten profit. Two thousand ten profit in Y Limited. Eighty-four thousand profit. Seventy-two thousand distributed as dividend. Balance profit is twelve. Then what about this one? Two thousand eleven. Two thousand eleven. One lakh. Nine lakh. Now let's go for the adjustments. What is the first adjustment? Dividend again. Again, he's saying that twelve percent dividend has not been proposed or deducted. So I need to deduct from here. proposed dividend 2011 dividend not yet proposed 72000 6 lakhs is a share capital 6 lakh share capital 12% dividend is 72000 deduct one more adjustment one more adjustment which is hidden within it is the amount of dividend either received or receivable from z now understand when did y limited acquire in z 31st December 2010. That means the dividend that he receives in 2011 is 2010 dividend when he was not a shareholder. Check balance sheet. Y Limited received from Z Limited in 2011 dividend of 36,000. That 36,000 cannot be considered because the 36,000 is completely pre-acquisition dividend. It is received in 2011 for the year 2010. It's pre-acquisition. But what about this now? The dividend is proposed for 2011 by Z Limited. That means, out of that, a portion should be received by Y Limited. Now, this is which year dividend? 2011 dividend. Current year that is nothing but 2011. So, when I am talking about 2011 dividend, the 2011 dividend will become post acquisition dividend as far as the holding company is concerned. That is Y Limited. So, I will get dividend receivable here. dividend receivable from z 75% of whatever he proposed how much did he propose 48000 75% is 36000 strike a balance this is 64 i think My date of acquisition is 31st December 2009. So whatever is existing on that day, I'll take it as pre-acquisition. My profits for the year 2010 and 11 total is 76,000. It should be taken as post-acquisition. We have identified pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. We can go for the distribution table.
single column under post acquisition only the PNL column appears there is no other reserve this is Y limited distribution Z limited I already distributed PNL 78,000 pre acquisition 76,000 post acquisition add Y limited share in post acquisition reserves of Z what is Y limited share in post acquisition reserves of Z 9000 strike a total 78000 and 85000 distribute this between X and minority X is 5 by 6 minority is 1 by 6 5 by 6 and 1 by 6 ratios for the distribution of reserves we have the distribution of reserves for both the subsidiaries now we can go for your main working notes cost of control minority interest and reserves for CBS turn to cost of control first two columns X in Z Y in Z Sorry, X in Y and Y in Z. X in Y and Y in Z. Continue. First one is cost of investments. Check your balance sheet. Asset side, balance sheet asset side, in X and Y is 630, Y and Z is 4 lakhs, 6 lakhs, 30,000 and 4 lakhs. Do not forget to deduct pre-acquisition dividend. There is pre-acquisition dividend guys. We have to deduct this amount. Check. X purchased in Y on 31st December 2009. So he will receive a dividend in 2010 March. Which is 2009 dividend pre-acquisition. Check. X received from Y in 2010 60,000 dividend. That entire 60,000 dividend will be considered as pre-acquisition. Though it is received in 2010, it was a dividend for the year 2009. Similar way come to Y and Z. Y <coughs> received from Z 36,000 in 2011. What he received in 2011 is 2010 dividend. His acquisition is on the last day of 2010. So the entire 36,000 he received from Z will be considered as pre-acquisition. So my net amounts are 5 lakh 70 and 3 lakh 64. This should be compared with their share in net assets. Share in net assets indicated by share capital and pre-acquisition reserves. Check share capital, each share is 10 rupees. Each share is 10 rupees, so accordingly give the values. X and Y holds 50,000 shares, 
So my share capital held is 5 lakhs. Y in Z, 30,000 shares. So the share capital is 3 lakhs. Pre-acquisition reserves, Y in Z, sorry, X in Y. X in Y is 65,000. Y in Z is 51,000. This is 5,65,000 and 3,51,000. Compare these two, you will get goodwills. X in Y goodwill is 5,000. Y in Z goodwill is 13,000. Total goodwill in the balance sheet should be 18,000. Two more working notes required. Minority interest and reserves for CBS. Minority interest in Y separate, in Z separate. How do we indicate minority interest? Minority share in the net assets of subsidiary. So, minority share will be indicated by their share in share capital, their share in the reserves. My reserves are both pre-acquisition reserve as well as post-acquisition reserve which are supposed to be added to them. In addition, since the dividend is proposed by the subsidiary and a portion is receivable by the minority interest, I will also add their share of proposed dividend. It is not yet paid. So it becomes a liability to be added to minority interest. If it was paid then I don't have to add. Because the liability automatically reduces. Come to the share capital. Check the number of shares held. Number of shares in Y 10,000 shares. 1 lakh. In Z 10,000 shares. Again 1 lakh. Each share is 10 rupees. Come to the reserves. Reserves in Y, 13,000 and 14,167. In Z, 17,000 and 3,000. Proposed dividend, there are two ways to calculate. Either check the dividend proposed. Current year in, y, in Z Limited dividend proposed is 48,000. Minority interest share in Z is 25%. 25% of 48,000 is 12,000. And come to this Y Limited. 72,000 dividend proposed. Minority interest share is 1 sixth, 12,000. Or simply I can say proposed dividend is 12% of share capital. So 12% of share capital, 1 lakh into 12%, 12,000. And this is also 12,000. Easier way to calculate is use the percentage. Use 12% on share capital, automatically you get the answer. I don't have to go with what is the percentage of proposed and on all that. So this will be 1,39,167 and this is 1,32,000. Add both. My total is 2,71,167. That is a minority interest in consolidated balance sheet. Reserves for CBS, final working note, only one reserve, PNL. Only one working note, PNL. Pick up from the balance sheet. What is a PNL? PNL from the balance sheet of X Limited is two lakh ten. X Limited balance is two lakh ten. His share in post acquisition reserves.
of Y. What is his share in post acquisition results of Y? Go back to your distribution table. 70833. Even X has to propose dividend because all the companies pay a dividend of 12%. That means even X is included. X total paid up share capital is 8 lakhs. 12% of 8 lakhs is 96,000 is his proposed dividend. Proposed dividend for 2011. Negative 96,000. Next. Check your dividends. Check your dividend from Y. Dividend from Y. X purchase in Y on 131, 12, 2009. So whatever dividend he received in 2010 is 2009 dividend. Which we called it as pre-acquisition. Already put it under cost of control. But what he received in 2011 in the balance sheet. 60,000 on the liability side. 2010 dividend we called it as pre. But what he received in 2011 is 2010 dividend. If his acquisition is on 31st December 2009. 2010 is post acquisition. So this 60,000 what he received in 2011 is perfect post acquisition dividend. So post acquisition dividend. From Y. Post acquisition dividend from Y. One is received. Other one is receivable. What is received is already there in the balance sheet for 60,000. But Y limited even during the current year they proposed 72,000. So out of this also 5, 6 again 60,000 should be receivable for X. So I'll have two things to be added in reserves for CBS. One amount which is received, what you received is for the year 2010 and one amount which is receivable, it is receivable for the year 2011, it will be received only in 2012 March. Both amounts are the same, 60,000 rupees. I think this is three lakhs four thousand eight thirty three. Okay, guys, that should be your reserves for CBS. There's no other adjustment, guys, other than the dividends.
Yes guys, so let's go for the consolidated balance sheet then. Consolidated balance sheet of X Limited as on 31st December 2011 Equity and Liabilities Shareholders funds, share capital, check the share capital of X, 8 lakhs. Reserves and surplus. There's a goodwill, but we got no capital reserve, only one reserve, PNL. 3 lakhs 4,833. Minority. Pick up from the working note, 2 lakhs 71,167. No non-current liabilities, there should be some current liabilities. Do not forget to write proposed dividend here. Current liabilities, the total figure is 84,000. I just wrote it as others because I have to write proposed dividend as well under this. What X Limited proposes is 96,000. Non current assets, tangible fixed assets. Check the balance sheet for tangible fixed assets. Fixed assets less depreciation is 420, 3,76 and 5,22. So that is 12, 13,18,000. I have intangible assets as well. My only intangible asset is goodwill. Value of goodwill is 18,000. We have already got that in cost of control. Next one is your current assets. Add everything 2,20,000. Fifteen lakh fifty six thousand is the balance sheet total. With that, we come to the end of the balance sheet.
Yes, guys. So let's check a similar problem with multiple dates of acquisition. Turn to problem number 26. Multiple dates of acquisition, similar problem. There will be dividend adjustments and nothing else in the problem. But it will be confusing you with a lot of dividends in the, as adjustments in that. Let's check. The following information is extracted from A Limited as on 31st December 2011. So there are three companies now in the group. That is A, B and C. P&L balance, he started with that. P&L balance as on 31st December 2009. After a provision for proposed dividend, excluding dividend received is 50,000, 36,000 and 26,000. Net trading profits for the year 2010 less dividend at the rate of 10% which will be received in 2011 but for the calendar year 2010. So these are dividends of 2010 paid in 2011. Again he is adding net profit of 2011 before taking onto account the proposed dividend at the rate of 10% for the calendar year 2011. So he is proposing 10% dividend which is not yet given in the books of accounts. At the end, after all this, I will see that the P&L balances are 120, 98,000 and 64,000. These values are without dividend received. Dividends received he has written separately. Dividend received from B Limited in 2010 is 20,000. In 2011, what he received from B Limited is 25. B Limited received from C Limited in 2011, 15,000. Share capital, each share is 1 rupee, 4 lakhs, 3 lakhs and 2 lakhs. And I have creditors as well. Fixed assets are given to you on the sets. Current assets are also given. Investments are very very important. Check. 2 lakh equity shares in B Limited were acquired on 31st December 2009 at 2 lakh 50,000 by A Limited. In the same way, 50,000 shares are again purchased in B Limited on 31st December 2010 for a consideration of 65,000. Now here if you observe there is a multiple date of acquisition for A and B. So A is acquiring in B both on 31st December 2009 as well as 31st December 2010. So initially he had 2 lakh shares. Now he is holding 50,000 shares extra. But there is only single date of acquisition for B and C. B and C 1,50,000 shares acquired on 31st December 2010. All the companies pay a dividend of 10% on the paid up share capital in the March following the end of the accounting year. The receiving companies entered the dividends in their books as and when the dividend was received. You are required to prepare a consolidated balance sheet, consolidated P&L, minority interest, cost of control. Anyways, those working notes are necessary for you to draft the balance sheet. So let's start. The only additional thing in this question, what you get compared to the previous one is the multiple date of acquisition. Other than that, the remaining problem is absolutely the same. Start with your date of acquisition guys, A and B, two dates of acquisition, B and C, single date of acquisition. And then go for the shareholding patterns. Date of acquisition, A and B, two dates, 31st December 09 as well as 31st December 10. But B and C is only on 31st December 2010. Shareholding pattern divided between number of shares held and percentage of holding. Number of shares held, come on, first in B. A limited acquired two times, first 31st December 09. And then 31st December 10. First, how many shares did he acquire? 
on 31st December 2009 he acquired 22 lakhs and then subsequently acquired 50,000 number of shares in B limited their share capital is 3 lakh shares of each of 1 rupee so balance should be held by minority first he acquired 2 lakh shares then he acquired 50,000 shares and then balance total is 3 lakhs minority holds 50,000 this combined 2 lakh 50 is 5 by 6 50,000 is 1 by 6 what about in C limited B and minority B limited holds 1,50,000 shares in C. Total share capital in C is 2 lakh shares. 1,50 held by B. Balance 50 held by minority. So this is 75,25. Go for analysis of reserves. With respect to date of acquisition, guys, when you are analyzing for different dates of acquisition, we need to always analyze with respect to date of first acquisition, 31st December 2009. But first, start with your indirect subsidiary, C Limited. P&L balance as on 31st December 2011. Check C Limited balance. C Limited balance as on 31st December 2011 is 64,000. You cannot, there is nothing given after that. Check 26,000 opening. 2010 profit is 28. He declared a dividend of 20,000. Again, he earned a profit of 30,000. The total reserve is 64. Split. My balance as on the date of acquisition, B and C, 31st December 2010, take after dividend, 2010, take after dividends, 2009 it was 26, he earned 28,000, it became 54, out of which for the year 2010 he declared a dividend of 20, the balance profits left out is 34. So this will be profit for 2011. 30,000. This is also already given to us. But we need one adjustment. That is dividend to be proposed. How much dividend is being proposed? 10%. 10% on the share capital of C Limited. C Limited share capital is 2 lakhs. That means the dividend should be 20,000. This is proposed dividend for the year 2011. Balance left out is 10,000. 34,000 is pre-acquisition. 10,000 is post-acquisition. Happily split. Distributed here itself. Between B and minority. B holds 75 minority 25 75 25 1 by 4 
let's go for the analysis for B limited then. Only reserve is P and L. Balance as on balance sheet date 31st December 2011. Come on. B limited balance in P and L. Do not consider the dividend. The received and all. So 98,000 is a P&L balance. Balance as on 31st December 2009. I have to analyze with respect to date of first acquisition. My first acquisition is 31st December 09. Check 31st December 09. Be limited. 36,000 then comes profit of 2010 and also my profit of 2011 2010 profit come on 42 earned 30,000 paid as dividend balance profit 12 11 50,000 out of 50,000 now I have to propose a dividend for the year 2011 dividend proposed for the year 2011 what is the amount 10% of share capital share capital in B limited is 3 lakhs 10% of share capital is 30,000 what is the balance then 20,000. I am analyzing with respect to 31st December 09, that is the date of first acquisition. So, this 36,000 will be called as pre acquisition. The balance to profits 32,000 will be called as post acquisition. Let's go for distribution then. Distribution of reserves, pre acquisition and post acquisition, PL column under post acquisition. We are distributing for B limited. Start with PL 36,000 pre, 32,000 post. Their share and post acquisition reserves of C What is B limited share and post acquisition reserves of C? Don't forget this chain holding compulsory 7500 This total is 36 and 39500 Start distributing. Distribute to A as 5 by 6 and to minority as 1 by 6. This is 30,000 and 6,000. Do not forget we have to redistribute. Do not forget we have to redistribute. There is multiple dates of acquisition. Redistribution becomes compulsory. Redistribution of reserves.
pre-acquisition and post-acquisition column. First start with A limited shares. Pre-acquisition share is 30,000. Post-acquisition share is 32,917. I have to redistribute with respect to the second acquisition. Redistribute with respect to second acquisition that is 31st December 2010. What is the percentage holding acquired? If you can get it as a percentage, get it as a percentage. Otherwise, put it as a ratio. How many shares did you buy? 50. What was the total share capital? 3 lakhs. How much holding? 50,000 divided by 3 lakhs is 1 by 6. Profits earned between first acquisition to second acquisition. What is the first acquisition date? 31st December 2009, second acquisition, 31st December 2010. So basically, from first acquisition to second acquisition, it is nothing but the profits of 2010. That's it. What is the profit of 2010? In the analysis, we know. What is the amount 2010 profit is? 12. Now, can we redistribute? How will be the redistribution happening? 1 by 6 of 12,000 is? 2000. Which one plus, which one minus? Pre plus, post minus. That's it. We got the redistributed amounts as well. We have already used these amounts now. These are the amounts which are supposed to be used for A limited share and B limited. Cost of control, minority interest, and this is for CBS. Cost of control in B, A in B, and B in C. Cost of investments, A and B, 2,50,000 plus 65, 3,15,000, B and C, 2 lakhs. The return on the asset side under investments, less pre-acquisition dividend. This is very careful. Till here the problem is easy. But here comes the main issue. Check the dividend received. Check the dividend received. A limited received from B limited in 2010, 20,000. What you received in 2010 is the dividend for the year 2009. My first date of acquisition is 31st December 2009. So, pre-acquisition dividend, completely I will take it as 20,000 here. Whatever is received in the year 2010, I am completely taking it. This is received in 2010. There is something received in 2011 as well. How much did you receive in 2011? 25. Why did you receive 5,000 extra? Because there was a subsequent acquisition of 50,000 shares on 31st December 2010. Think only for that 50,000 shares perspective. 50,000 shares acquired on 31st December 2010. I received dividend in 2011. To that extent of 50,000 shares, that extra 5,000 rupees, whatever you received as dividend, should be considered as pre. What about the balance 20,000? The balance 20,000 is post. Because it belongs to those 2 lakh shares which were acquired in the previous year. Check for B limited. Dividend received 15,000 in 2011. Acquired in 2010. So whatever you receive in 2011 is pre-acquisition. 
15,000 received in 2011. All negative figures. And this is 2 lakhs 90,000. 1 lakh 85,000. Compare this with share in net assets. Comprising of share capital and pre-acquisition reserves. Share capital, each share is 1 rupee. Check your share holding pattern and you can fill up. A and B, A and B 2,50,000 shares, 2,50,000 share capital, 1 rupee shares. B and C, 1,50,000 shares, 1,50,000 share capital. Pre-acquisition reserves, A and B, we already got from the redistribution table, don't take from the distribution table. We've already changed the figures, 32. And what about B and C? B limited analysis itself we have distributed 2500. Strike totals 2,82,000 and 1,75,500. Sufficient enough to indicate your goodwills. So what is a goodwill? My goodwill for the first case is 8,000. Second case is 9,500 with my total goodwill combining it to 17,500. Continue working with the minority interest. Maintain two columns, minority interest in B and minority interest in C. Minority interest is his share in share, the net assets. Net assets indicated by share capital plus reserves. Share capital plus reserves. Reserves we have split between pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Do not forget an addition for proposed dividend. Dividend is proposed, not yet paid. So minority interest share of dividend should be added to the minority interest. Let's fill it up. Share capital, 50,000 shares in B and 50,000 shares in C, 1 rupee share, so you get the same value, 50,000 and 50,000. Reserves, in B limited reserves, 6,000, 6,583. Reserves in C, 8,500 and 2,500. Like I told you, dividend easier way of calculating is directly calculate on the share capital. What is the percentage of dividend? 10%. 10% on the share capital is 5,000 and 5,000. If you get any doubt, you cross verify now itself. Later point of time, it will become much faster for you to calculate it this way. Check 30,000 dividend by B. Out of which, what is your share? 1 6th. 1 6th or 35? 5,000. C limited declared 20,000 dividend. 20,000 dividend, 25%. 5,000 again. So this will be 57,000, no, 67,583. And this will be 66,000. With my total minority interest, 1,33,583. Finally, reserves for CBS. Only one column, PNL.
It's only a PNL column that I have to maintain, guys. Start with the limited balance of PNL. A limited balance in PNL is one lakh twenty. Start with that. Share in post acquisition reserves of subsidiary B. Share in post acquisition reserves of B. We just have from the redistribution table three zero nine one seven. Let him propose a dividend. Everyone is proposed dividend. Proposing a dividend. So proposed dividend. Current year dividend 2011 at the rate of 10 percent. Check the share capital. Share capital in A is 4 lakhs. 2011 dividend will become 40 thousand. Deduct. Do not forget dividend or post acquisition dividend from B. Balance sheet. I have two dividends received, twenty thousand and twenty-five thousand. The first twenty thousand I have taken it as pre-acquisition. Out of the second twenty-five thousand, five thousand I said is pre. Then the balance twenty thousand, which is received, is post. This is two thousand eleven dividend, no, two thousand ten dividend. Same way, current year dividend is receivable. 2011. How much dividend? B limited declared 30,000. Your share 5 by 6. 5 by 6 of 30 is 25, not 20 now, because that 50,000 extra shares are giving you extra dividend. That's it. Strike a total towards the end. 1 lakh 55,917. One lakh 55,917. And go for the balance sheet, guys. After that,
Yes, guys, let's complete the balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet of A Limited as on 31st December 2011. Equity and liabilities Shareholder funds Share capital Four lakhs Reserves and surplus only PL one lakh fifty five nine one seven minority one lakh thirty three five eighty three Current liabilities Creditors Add them twenty thousand, five thousand plus seventeen thousand is forty two thousand and I have a proposed dividend forty thousand. Assets Non current assets Tangible fixed assets Total of tangible fixed assets is two lakh ten, one lakh eighty eight, and two lakh sixty one. So that should be a total of six lakhs fifty nine intangible assets, goodwill seventeen five hundred. Check your cost of control. Then finally, your current assets one lakh ten.
Guys, we have made a mistake here. This is dividend. We forgot to add a dividend receivable from C. Fifteen thousand dividend receivable from C. B holds one lakh fifty thousand shares in C Limited, so ten percent is one lakh is fifteen thousand. This should be thirty five then. Sorry guys, please make necessary changes. This becomes forty seven. Yes, guys. Now it should tally. So, is it seven eighty six five hundred balance sheet total? So the adjustment that we forgot, guys. Dividend receivable from C for the year 2011. 2011 dividend. C Limited declared dividend receivable by B. We forgot to add that small adjustment. That was the reason we are finding out the difference. 